It's a possible God. It's a miracle God, Jesus. It's a possible God. It's a miracle God. It's a possible God. It's a miracle God. It's a possible God. It's a miracle God. Jesus is a possible God. It's a miracle God. Jesus is a possible God. It's a miracle God. It's a wonderful God. A kind God that we have is a generous God. Oh, even the impossible God, the possible God is a miracle God. Nothing that is impossible for Him is a miracle God. The possible God is a miracle God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You have the key of life and the key of death. You raise the dead to life and you heal the sick. For you, all impossibilities are possible. Oh, no hopeless case. For you, Jesus. It's a possible God. It's a miracle God. It's a possible God. Jesus. He raised the dead to life. He healed the sick. It's a possible God. He healed the sick. He raised the dead to life. It's a possible God. Jesus, a miracle worker. It's a healing God. It's a wonderful God. It's a miracle God. We must thank Him every day. We must praise His name. We must thank Him every day. Oh, we must glorify Him. We must praise Him every day. We must praise Him every day. Because it's a possible God. A miracle God. It's a possible God. Jesus our Savior. It's a miracle God. It's a wonderful God. It's a miracle God. Oh. For him nothing that is impossible. Every hopeless case he handles them. Oh. We have a God that is possibility. It's a miracle God, every day of our lives. We have a possible God, a miracle God, a possible God. The God that we are serving is, it's a possible God. It's a miracle worker, it's a possible God. Let us praise Him every day. It's a possible God, it's a miracle God. It's a possible God. Do not worry you about your case. It's a miracle God. A miracle worker is a possible God. Look at what he did to Jerry's daughter. He raised her to life. Yes. Oh, the woman with the issue of blood. Oh, Jesus handled that case. Yes. This is the gospel we are going to listen today. It's a possible God. It's a miracle God. Oh. It's a possible God. It's a miracle God. Jesus of Nazareth is a possible God. A miracle God. Oh, it's a possible God. Help me to praise Him every day. It's a miracle God. It's a miracle God. It's a miracle worker. It's a healing God. The covenant keeping God. Oh, it's a miracle God. Say it loud. It's a covenant keeping God. A faithful God. It's a miracle God. Jesus of Nazareth. A covenant keeping God. A faithful God. It's a faithful God. It's a miracle God. It's a possible God. Oh. It's a miracle God. A possible God. Thank you, Jesus.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, my dear friends, my brothers and sisters. We thank God for another Sunday, another great day today that he has given to us to praise him and to worship him, to adore him and glorify his name. Today is the 30th day of the month of June, and it is the end of the month of June. Tomorrow, by God's grace, we shall enter the first day of the month of July to begin the second phase of this year, 2024. And I'll ask you by tomorrow to wish one another happy and happy and glorious first day of the month of July. God bless you all in our anticipation. But first of all, we have to thank him for giving us the end of this month, to see the end of the month and not the month seeing our end. To him be the glory and praise both now and forevermore. Amen. Today, Holy Mother Church celebrates the 13th Sunday of the year, an ordinary time of the church's calendar. And the readings of today are very, very important as we share. Today, the first reading is taken from the book of Wisdom, chapter 1, from verse 13 to 15, then chapter 2, from verse 23 to 25. And then the second reading of today is taken from 2 Corinthians, chapter 8, from verse 7, 9, then 13 to 15. The gospel passage is being taken from Mark Gospel, chapter 5, from verse 21 to 43. And with Psalm 30, all the four readings, including the Psalm, agree that God is a God of life. He has the key of life. And let us cooperate with him in his marvelous works upon us. He does great things. And with faith, everything is possible, even for us and for him. He wants us to cooperate with him with our faith. The readings today talks about death. Death. And we'll, we'll now see how death came into the world and who has authority over death. Who, is, who has the final say about death? The Book of Wisdom, the first reading today, mentions that death entered the world through sin. And let us remind ourselves that the type of death that is referring to is not physical death or biological death. This one is, is, for, is sure for everybody who will surely die. And even when Adam and Eve were created in the image and likeness of God, God preserved them to, to live forever in the Garden of Eden. But that does not mean that perhaps their physical body that is down, was made from the dust, will not be expired one day. The type of death that we are talking about that can destroy us totally is the spiritual death that will lead to eternal death. That is the one the evil one has inflicted upon our soul. And when we are, we are dead, we are dead spiritually, and we can be dead finally, eternally, in hellfire. This is the type of death that Jesus has come to conquer. Physical death is for all. Whether you are holy, whether you are a child of God, whether you are a sinner, one day when your time comes, you will surely die. You will surely die and you will be buried to await the resurrection of the dead on the last day. So we are not talking about physical death. After all, St. Paul mentions in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, from verse 25 downward, that the last of the enemies to be conquered, that provoked all evil, is the physical death. That will be the last that Jesus will conquer and hand over the kingdom of God to his Father, who will now glorify him finally. And so, my dear friends, that is the death we are talking about today. And so, we must move on. You can see the gospel message today. That Jesus has, has power even upon physical death, spiritual death, 
and eternal death. But he has come to tackle spiritual death by saving us from our sins, the sins that destroy our souls and, and make our soul to enter into hellfire to experience eternal death. But to show us that he has power over even spiritual and or physical death, you can see in the message of today, the reason to life of Jairus' daughter, a high officer of the synagogue, so his daughter has been critically ill. And so he has to do something. He has to break the protocols. You know, being a Pharisee and a Jew who were always in opposition, opposition to Jesus Christ, at this point in time, he has to love his daughter more than the, the position he was occupying. And so he has to look for Jesus. And he came to Jesus and told Jesus, Please, could you come to my house because my daughter is critically ill and about dying. And as Jesus was moving to the house of Jerus, the high synagogue officer, something happened here. A miracle has to take place. Miracle upon miracle. Miracle that leads to another miracle. A woman who has been suffering from a hemorrhage, the disease of the stomach, the menstrual flow of the blood for women and that was what was disturbing this woman for 12 years the gospel mentioned it and you can see that all the, the synoptic gospel mention the healing of this woman and the raising to life of Jairus' daughter and so while Saul was going to Jairus' daughter the crowd was following him and then he experienced that somebody touched him People were touching him as the apostle reminded him. But there was one who touched him with the light of faith. Others were touching him physically without their faith. And this is a warning sign to all of us. There are many people today who are Christians, but they are not experiencing Christ. There are many people today who are in the church, but their mind are not in the church. There are many of us today who receive Holy Communion. But we are not receiving him with the light of faith. We touch him in Holy Communion. We receive him every day of our lives. But there are few who are receiving him in the light of faith. And they receive their healing. The healing power of the Eucharist continues to take place all over the world. In our masses all over the world. People receive him and they receive even their physical healing. And so we have to learn to touch Jesus, to receive Jesus with the light of faith. And believe that he can do what he has done to this woman with the issue of blood. And Jesus has to know who touched him. He has to inquire to know. The reason being that he wants to show everybody that the sickness that the Jews were referring or thinking that it was something that should ostracize somebody and send somebody away to be isolated from the crowd. To be seen as unclean. God has come. Everything about God is clean. So he has to show them that the woman is clean. It's made in the image and likeness of God. The daughter of God should come out and reveal to them. When you read the books of Leviticus, chapters 14, chapter 15, you will see how those sicknesses of the skin, including the issue of blood, was being tackled by the Old Testament believers. God would tell Moses to keep this people out of the camp, like the disease of leprosy, the disease of the issue of blood. Leviticus chapter 15, from verse 25 downward, you will see the case and the lot of this woman. And so when Jesus was shouting, who touched me, the woman was afraid to continue to be in these states. She will embarrass herself and perhaps people will stone her and people will scold her to, why do you touch Jesus? So, the woman came so frightened, shaken and said, I am the one who touched you. And Jesus said, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go and you are healed. Dear friends, the faith of the woman brought this healing upon her body. Remember, after 12 years, she had been going from one doctor to another, looking for a solution to her problems. Then came Jesus in her lives, and she was cured, 
and she was healed. It can happen to anybody with a light of faith. Let's move on to the other miracle. And then Jesus went on and on to the house of Jerus, and on their way, a message was sent to the man that your daughter was dead, no need to disturb the master. But Jesus assured him that do not be afraid. Let's go there and see what was happening. And there, there was commotion in the compound. People were wailing, they were crying, and they were making a caricature of Jesus who told them that no, the girl was sleeping. He was not dead. He was referring to physical dead. Physical dead at that time was being seen by the Jews as maybe sleeping. And the Christians will interpret it as sleeping. And so, because the Christian sees this dead as a transition, a living of one's nature to another nature in another world. So physical death is not the end of life, but it is a change of life. In death, physical death, life is not ended, but it's changed to another substance in the world of God. So we should not be afraid of death. St. Paul will tell us in all his writings that a life for death and for Christ. And so we need not be afraid of death. God has authority over death. And he's the one that can keep us alive or dead. If we have faith, we can be in his hands. So my dear friends, that was what pushed Jesus to shout to this girl who was asleep. And the eyes of the Jewish people, he was she was totally dead. And Jesus said, Talita kum, little girl. I say unto you, rise up. And the girl stood up. And Jesus said, give us something to eat. Oh, how gracious the God we are, we are serving. A generous God. A kind God. And the second reading of today, St. Paul has asked us to take the actions of Jesus. Jesus who has come to offer himself for us in order to be saved. We too, we too should help the poor. We should give whatever we have and share whatever we have with the poor, with our brothers and sisters. To give out our whatever we have is one of the, great, the greatest virtues of Christianity. Jesus came to give himself to us, to die for us so that we could be saved, to die for us so that our illness and everything that is inflicting upon our body will be saved and will be restored to wholeness. And that was how Jerusalem's daughter was raised to life. Now, what about us? There are many beautiful things we can learn from these beautiful two miracles that have taken place today in, in the same way as the gospel fused them together. Number one is the light of faith. When we have faith, we cooperate in God's miracles. Look at when Jesus changed and we have made the 5,000 men to be fed with just five loaves of bread and two fish. It was the faith of this little boy who offers and his generosity who offers the two fish and the two loaves that make the miracle possible. We must cooperate with our God, with the grace of God, in order to make any miracle to be possible in our lives. The miracle of healing of the sick, the miracle of raising the dead to life, can take place if only we have faith in Him. Can you still remember last Sunday when the gospel took us to the Sea of Galilee? In the waves and the winds of storm, the apostles were afraid, and Jesus pronounced the statement, all men of little faith, do not be afraid. We should cooperate. When we have faith, anything can happen. What we see as impossible can be possible. And so in God, impossibility does not exist. Whatever God cannot do does not exist. Whatever God cannot do, I repeat, does not exist. In God, there are no hopeless situations. In God, there are no impossibilities. Impossibilities makes possible. He's omnipotent God, all powerful God. He has power over all, power over sickness, power over death, power over everything. He controls our lives. Let us give ourselves to Him and we should not give up. 
all that they need from us, just a little faith. The faith of the woman of the issue of blood brought her healing. The faith of the official of the synagogue, Jairus by name, brought healing and deliverance and raising to life of his daughter. My friends, let us also take note that Jesus has not come to give everybody physical life to remain in this, in this world forever. Upon all his healings and miracles, we are told in the gospel that Jesus raised only three persons to life. One, in Luke gospel chapter 7, when he reads from verse 12 or from verse 11 downward, the widow's only son was raised to life. The widow at Nain, the city called Nain. In John Gospel chapter 11, the raising to life of Lazarus, and in today's case, Jairus' daughter. Apart from these three, no any other case of the raising to life, physical raising to life of anybody, to show that at times, God will allow us to fall sick and to die in order to experience the better life. The question of uh, death is not my portion, does not exist. But God does this thing in order to let us know that He is the resurrection and the life. The raising to life of Lazarus, the raising to life of Jairus' daughter, the raising to life of the, the only son of the widow at name, foreshadows his own resurrection and our own resurrection. On the last day, all those who do good will be raised to life to enjoy the beatific vision of heaven eternally. On the last day, all those who provoke evils, all that provoke evils, the devils and all his angels and every sin that provoke evils among us and evil to us will be raised to eternal hell fire forever. On which way are you preparing your eternity? To be raised to life to dwell in heaven? Or to be raised to life to dwell in hellfire and be condemned totally? That is the question. But above all, that will be a message for another day. Today let us glorify Jesus. Let us thank him as the psalmist said, sometimes he said, I should praise him who has raised us to life. We too should have hope. Those of us who are spiritually dead, we should pray that God should raise us up. We can be changed from spiritual death and, and, and repent. The death that you and I should always run away from every day as we struggle in this life is the eternal death. Once you, you, are, you are dead eternally, that is the end of you. And that is the death we should be afraid of. But Jesus has come to conquer it. On the cross of Calvary. Will you cooperate with him? So that when you die, you will escape it. Run away every day of your life to escape both spiritual death that lead to eternal death. But above all, let us thank our God who has come to save us and to give us life. God wants us to possess his life eternally with him. And so, may the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be gracious.